One more minute, gentlemen. And, and just, 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 just here, please. Just just here, please. Just here, please. And just allow there as well, please. And one this way, guys, please. Yes, sir. Here, please. Really nice yeah. and close in together. Yeah. Yeah. And to us on this end, please. One more right down in the centre on the floor, please. Right in the middle, if you would. Thank you very much. And just towards the left, the left side, the middle. Just down the bottom, please, on the left hand side. Thank you very much. And last few over this side, please. Right to the end there, please. Jerry, this way, please. Jerry, keep going, please. Thank you. Jerry, keep going. Just come out about small this side. Right, 30 seconds. Thank you. Right in the middle, please. Can you do, just without the place on the Last, last week, just without the place. Start at this end again, please. Just work around, that's it. Man in the funny jump on this end, and then if you go around, that'd be tremendous. Thank you, work around a bit. Down to the bottom, please. Thank you. Right, Jones. Right, we'll sit down. If you want, you want to sit down. Thank you. Thank you. Do you want me to 10 seconds of head and shoulders like this, or are you all right? Yes, okay. And then if everybody, if all stills could then sit on the floor, please, or stand aside, that would be great. Uh, usual rules of engagement. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you very much for coming. Welcome to Bursa Marcella. Uh, Kate and Jerry will be reading out a short statement. Um, they will read it jointly in different nice places. Nice. Uh, then we'll open to questions. If um, we could all indicate to me that you'd like to ask a question, I will try and share it as best I can. And if you can identify yourself and your title or, or um, uh, <coughs> media outlet that you represent, that would be great. Um, I know, don't worry. The snappers will stop, we'll, we'll sit down. Right, gents, another 10 seconds of that. And then if you could, please stay down for... No, TV are complaining some heads are up, so... Yeah, no, the fashion's going to stop in a second. We're all one big happy family on this. All right. Okay, we'll just get the new image up. Well, thank you all for coming and your... Uh, continued interest in the search for Madeline. We're here today, five years on, knowing that the chances of finding Madeline have greatly increased with the ongoing investigative review being undertaken by the Metropolitan Police. We'd like to thank DCI Redwood and his team for the sterling work they've undertaken in the last 12 months. There are several messages that we would like to reinforce. First of all, and crucially, there is a real possibility that Madeline can still be found alive. As you know, the Metropolitan Police released the new age progress progression last week. We believe this is what Madeline will look like today um, as she approaches her ninth birthday next weekend. We'd like to reiterate a few of the appeals made by the Met last week. And ideally, if you have information, we'd be grateful if you pass it directly to the Metropolitan Police. I think you'll have the numbers 0207 321 plus 44 207 321 for outside the UK. With regards to the age progression, if you have seen a little girl who looks like this, or if you see a little girl who looks like this, please contact the police immediately. Please don't hesitate, just contact them straight away. I'd like to appeal to the general public as well. First of all, I'd like to say thank you because I know how much you've helped us in the last five years. But we'd like to reach out to you for your help again. Can we encourage you to have a, a long look at the new age progression image? And if you could help us by circulating it and distributing it to all your contacts far and wide, that would really help the search. You can download posters from our website, findmadeline.com, or you can contact the campaign through the website again and we can send out posters. Secondly, if you were in or around Prior Deluge between the 28th of April 2007 and the 3rd of May and haven't yet spoken to the police, please can you do so. Even if you don't think you have any information that might be significant, all information is important. It helps the police to build up a a picture of who was there, where and when. And finally, um, and obviously, 
if you have any information, and when I say information, I mean knowledge, evidence of where Madeline is now or who is involved in her abduction, please contact us. I'd encourage you to contact the Metropolitan Police at Operation Grange if you can. You have to ask uh, the Chief Constable, who's now in the PSNI, about that. I think so. I, th I think it directs people it's to the image, people. really, rather than just to have you seen Madeline. I think it it's draws people in, really. Have you seen this little girl, in fact? So we're not just saying she doesn't have to be called Madeline, obviously, you know, but it's have you seen me? Have you seen a little girl who looks like me? Well, even when we started um, the first draft, and I have to say this isn't much different to the first draft really, I mean we did share it with them and they, they understood that, it, that we had to try and think what Madeline would look like today in order to find her. And we asked them, how, how old do you think this little girl is? That's what we said first of all. And then we said, do you think she'd be in your year? Do you think she'd be a year older than you, two years? And they initially came up and said actually eight to nine. So we actually, we, we've tweaked the photograph to make it look older than that. So that, I mean they've had input as well. Um, um, but they take it all in the stride, to be honest. They know perfectly well why we've released it and they know that we need to circulate it as far as we can. Uh, sorry to can I ask the photographers please not on the chairs because you're blocking the TV cameras. Um, if you could do it from the floor, we'd be grateful. Thank you. Okay, okay, I'm trying to I'm trying to I'm trying to address it. If the photographers could stay on the floor, I'd be very grateful. Thank you very much. Uh, the gentleman in the toilet share with the world, let's go. Gamefly is the largest online video game rental service and offers you a choice of over 7,000 new and classic titles across the I think for the search to be as effective as it can be, we need the Portuguese authorities on board. Um, a lot of the 195 investigative opportunities naturally are in Portugal. Madeline was taken in Portugal. Whoever took her was in Portugal. We you know, we weren't surprised that the case wasn't suddenly reopened. There will be an ongoing dialogue, but it's really quite, in Portugal, it's really quite uncommon for a case to be closed, unsolved, after such a short period. And part of it, obviously, was uh, with the new penal code and their guidos have to be, you have to come up with a, a kind of summary report after the, the time frame from the first guido. So there was an element of that, and obviously there was a huge amount of pressure and the, the the, at the time, the authorities felt they couldn't do any more. What we have we asked for is for all the information to be put together and reviewed, and that included the PJ files, information that we held, and um, people had come to us directly and the UK police. And what they're clearly identifying is new opportunities and new information. Now that process may take take some time, but our opinion is that if people want the case solved and they want to bring the perpetrators to justice, the best chance of doing that is to reopen it formally so that diligence is the term used in Portugal can be undertaken. If I may just ask a follow-up. If they don't reopen it, what does that do to the Met's ability to, to, to pursue this? I think the, the I suppose the Met and the Home Office are in a better position to answer that question than we are. Um, and it, it makes a massive difference knowing that they are driving this rather than us. You have to believe that people want to find Madeline, they want to find the perpetrator, and they want to solve the case. And if that's the case and that's what how they feel, then I'm sure the case will be reopened. The lady in blue beside her. Oh. I wonder how much you know about the and how much hope do you have of well, obviously, we don't know all the 195 leads. There are certain things that we know. But obviously, we know detail it in broad terms, really, rather than specifics. There is some new information, though, which we know about. 
Um, we've, had it, we've had specific examples given to us, and I have to say we are um, being very reassured about the forensic detail with which the review team are going through, because as you know, I've read the files pretty much quickly. Kate's gone through them uh, meticulously, and they've identified other things that we haven't, um, that need review. But the, I want to emphasize, it's not just historical, there is new information as well. Um, Martin Fricker, Danny Murray. We haven't had a direct input, but all the information held by our private investigation team, everything has been handed over. So any interviews, anything that's been done, uh, analyses, any paperwork that we've been held, whatever that information has come through, whether it's by email, the phone calls through, uh, the hotline, everything that we've had has been given to the Met. General at the back. John Tooby from the Ladies' Question. Can you give us any idea of the electric No. We can't. You have to ask the police, and I, I don't think it's right that we should be talking about the investigative detail. We're and more the last than. Two. Certainly at this point, we've been more than happy that the, the police are actively engaged. The last thing we want to do is jeopardise anything that could help to find Madeline. So. Gentlemen, with the I think, you know, the Metropolitan Police will be exploring all avenues, all scenarios, and until each and individual scenario is eliminated, until we find Madeline, and, you know, it's speculation. We don't know who's taking her, we don't know where she is, and that's really what today's about. It's about opportunities that can help the police and us find Madeline. And, you know, a lot of the times from other cases, particularly in the States, Ernie Allen has said to me on many occasions, you just could not have imagined this scenario. So, we, we don't know. Can I, can I follow up on that? Sure. There's been a lot of attention to I didn't, I didn't catch Excuse all the strength, questions. Strength from other cases in the States. That oh, from other found. cases? No, absolutely. And as you know, the, the centre in Washington has a great, great experience uh, with these cases. And in fact, Ernie Allen. Um, sent me a message last week to say that there was another a man who'd rediscovered himself um, from an age progression image you know so these cases keep happening obviously we don't want to wait that long obviously um, for just all these cases and you know they keep coming you know it just emphasizes the need that you have to keep going and it'd be wrong to give up I think the other thing Ernie has told us from the North American experience is that the younger the child is when they're taken the more likely they are to be kept and it's you know Madeline is very young for those who are taken to be abused as such like the JC Dugards, Sean Hornbecks who were 10, 11 when they were taken, Elizabeth Smart etc so you know we've just got to have an open mind until we know who's taken her. Uh, lady in blue at the front. Hello Emily Anderson, BBC Radio Leicester. How important is the community of both of them for you over the years support? No, very, they've been very supportive and we were talking about this before because obviously neither of us are from Leicester but I, I feel it have been really supportive and protective of us um, and the support's there and we've had so many people help in different ways and the community has been valuable to us but also to, also to Sean and Emily obviously. And uh, how are Sean and Emily coping? Do they lead a normal lifestyle as normal as it can be? Yeah, no they do. They're, yeah. they're fantastic and they're really happy and... They do everything seven year olds do and they go to school and they go to clubs and parties and they go on holiday. I think their life, they just, they've grown up that there's one of our very important members of our family who just happens to be missing. And um, they understand that, and they want they want her back as well. But yeah, they're happy. Anybody else? Martin again. The image looks like a school photo. Hmm. Is 
seen saw a number of going through those things about like starting school. How does that is that is it a tough thing to go through knowing you haven't seen that many going through the same thing? I think all of these milestones are, are always difficult. I mean, Sean and Emily starting school was particularly hard. Yeah. And even just witnessing them now, sort of talking non-stop and writing stories, and I mean, it's inevitable that we're going to be wondering, you know, what would Madeline be doing now, and how would she be interacting with them? We've obviously been through a lot of these milestones. So. Mm -hmm. Yep. Yeah, Lady back. That's actually old news. That's actually been in the media before. I seem to remember. I mean, I don't know if he's come forward again. I'm not sure, but. Well, obviously, if there's any kind of lead uh, which hasn't been investigated properly, we, we obviously welcome that. I think, greatly. I mean, that's one of the key things, isn't it? Um, you may not know whether the information's credible or not at first sight, and um, it's about investigating and, and proving whether the intelligence is credible or not and worthy of further investigation. Um, but I'm confident that all that information is now being captured, assessed, and reviewed. Well, obviously, what we've been through in the last five years, I mean, having to go through that and still go through, I have to say, that, that pain and sadness, anxiety, frustration and anger. I mean, it, it, it's an awful thing to go through. And, I, you know, I know how much it's devastated us. And I really don't want Sean and Emily to have to suffer like that. And as Jerry said, they've kind of taken things in their stride so far and they've grown up with Madeline, you know, being missing. But obviously, as they get older and the understanding becomes greater and the desire to find the sister becomes even greater then they you know if we haven't found madeline then they will inevitably go through all that range of emotions and i, I want to protect them from that i have no doubt Nelly, when you know if there comes a time when madeline's not found and sean and Amelia are of an age like teenagers that they will want to help us they'll want to carry on the search but i don't want them to go through that emotion and i don't really want them to have the burden of of this, of having to keep looking and looking and looking and not being able to stop, you know. So we need to find her now. <laughs> With all the ups and downs, do you allow yourself to get your hopes up in that Well, the hope's always there. You know, what, what we don't do is if there's a sighting or something, we don't start thinking, oh, this could be it, this could be it. I mean, there's been that many that we've now got to a place um, but we just thought, well, let's just wait, wait till it gets investigated until somebody shows us a photograph that we think, gosh, that looks like our daughter. Um, then we, then we don't. It's self protection, really. You know, we don't. I'm certainly that. more confident now than at any point for the last four and a half years that we'll actually find Madeline and who's responsible. I think you know the resource that's been directed, the expertise, and the determination that the the team are showing. They really want to get to the bottom of this. We've been asked a few times today, you know, how is it now, fifth anniversary, five years on? I thought, well, actually, it's better than it was a year ago. And that's true. I mean, I, I feel so much more positive and hopeful than we did a year ago. So. Right, time for just a couple more questions, I think. Anybody else? Yeah. How confident are you that you will follow Madeline alive and alive? You will be reunited with her one day. Well, all I can say is, you know, there's a, a real possibility that she's still out there alive, you know, and uh, now that we've got the Metropolitan Police on board and hopefully there'll be great cooperation with the Portuguese, the case will get reopened, all these lines of inquiry have been looked at and hopefully that will lead us to Madeline to at least find out what's happened. So. Any final question? Uh, gentleman right at the back, yep. Yeah. So I can speak up a bit, please. Process the age progression. Yeah. How, how the age progress was, was created. Yeah, well, the artist Terry Blythe uh, 
was commissioned by the Metropolitan Police and I know she's done work for them before and she came and visited me and we talked about Madeline, uh, she looked at all the photographs around the house, we talked about certain features, certain expressions that she has and then I then sent her a disc with loads of photos of Madeline on, photographs of myself and Jerry um, around the similar age and also the most recent photographs of Sean and Emily and then Terry went off and did her work and I'm sure she'd be able to give more information about that um, but then she came back with the first draft and as I say it wasn't very much this was draft six but it isn't very much doesn't differ much rather from, from the very first one just little tweaks here and there um, so I, I think she did it really well actually yeah, she's done a brilliant job yeah. All right, final question, gentlemen here. You know, the people that have any hair, it's, 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 there's no fringe in it, and the parting is not the same as any of the other things. Not really. I mean, the part in that was just the way she did it, and we, we could keep changing it, but actually I thought it was more the, the face, to be honest, that would be important. The fringe, I guess, yeah, I just thought let's take away the fringe, really. Um, a lot of girls grow their hair out. I mean, who knows? We don't know is the bottom line, but... He just said, let's go without the fringe this time. Yeah. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, many thanks indeed for coming. Uh, we'll call it quits there. Thank you very much. Thank you. 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 Yeah. Okay.